get her name right? I think it's close. <laughs> All right, so uh, movies of the week. The top three coming out. Uh, Deep Water. I think we talked about this last week, but I didn't see it. Which one was Deep Water? So Deep Water was the one with Ben Affleck, and I don't know if we talked about it. Was but it ben the one that, Affleck... that mirrors Armageddon? No. Okay. So Ben Affleck, who I cannot stand, I think he's a terrible actor in most cases, but he, um, in this movie, he plays this retired guy that invented some chip that's in drone, so he's very wealthy, and he's married to this very beautiful Latina woman played by Anna de Armas, who was his girlfriend at the time till he dumped her for J-Lo. Um, and this woman cheats on him right in front of him and invites the guys over for dinner and so on. And they all end up dead. Oh, and he grows slugs in his basement. And they have this daughter that's way too cute and actually very annoying. And the end, that's the whole movie. It's really long, slow, and boring and pointless. And it's just horrible. Wait, he kills them all? I mean, it seems like it, yeah. How fun. I, that doesn't sound so bad. And I think we did talk about this no, last I'm week. No, I'm making it sound better than it is. Because I, I was telling you uh, Ben Affleck was a great Batman, and you, and you disagreed with that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. So it's deep. terrible. Yeah. It was, <laughs> <laughs> right. So Deepwater, it, did, it didn't, uh, is it out already, or is it coming out? It's on It's on Hulu. Oh, okay. It's on Hulu. And I... I I thought I hadn't but reviewed it, but you know what? It's now we reviewed it again. Still don't see it. <laughs> hey, it must not be that good. Actually, let no. me see. Um, do we have like the Hulu top ten somewhere? I'll, I'll look that up while you do the next movie. Uh, There's a Hulu top ten. I didn't know. Well, I'm I'm looking it up. The Lost City. Tell me about the Lost City. So that's probably the biggest release this weekend. I expected to laugh a lot more than I did, but I still laughed. It still had some funny lines and funny scenes and stuff. But basically the story is Sandra Bullock plays this washed up romance novelist who once was very popular, but now she's kind of um, phoning it in. She's really um, a PhD in some kind of archaeology. And she's upset that that's that instead she dedicated her life to this like baloney, these books that are romance novels that, you know, are not very lofty in life. Um, the cover model for her books is played by Channing Tatum, and he wears this blonde wig, so he looks like Fabio. Fabio, And so she gets kidnapped by Daniel Radcliffe, who plays this evil rich guy, to South America or Latin America to find this lost city because he knows her background and that she's an archaeologist, and he knows that she could, she may know where the lost city is because she's alluded to it in one of her books. And so Channing Tatum goes to Latin America to find her and save her because he's in love with her, even though she hates him. And and then also Channing Tatum hires Brad Pitt, who's some kind of expert rescue guy, like a Navy SEAL or something. No way. And Yeah, and they're all in the jungle. And you know what? It was entertaining. I was not bored, excuse me, bored at all. But I should have laughed a lot more because it looks like it would have been a lot more funny. But it was funny. There were some good lines, but it just wasn't funny enough. Um, one of my friends, when I was telling him about it, said that it sounded to him like Romancing the Stone. And you know what? There are a lot of similarities. Romancing the Stone, of course, is far superior. But this wasn't bad. I mean, listen, if you're looking for something to take your mind off of things and to laugh a little, though not a lot, this is it. I mean, there was nothing wrong about it, except there's one scene where Channing Tatum's giant naked butt is in your face in the or some body double, a stunt double or something is in your face. You don't want to see done without you don't want to see Channing Tatum's butt. No, not really. I'm not that into him. I'm just saying, Miss Parker, him... would you like to see Channing Tatum's butt? Yeah, Miss Parker, <laughs> put her down for a yes. Listen, I'm ahead of the curve. I liked him in his very first starring role in the movie Fight. I really liked him Fight. in that. And oh, then after Fight. that, I got over his whole hey, I'm a hayseed former stripper act. He's yeah. very woke. I don't like that. That's a turn off. Yeah, I don't I don't like that part. But um, he was pretty you funny he, in, he, in 21 Jump Street. That was a really dumb movie, but he was funny that, in it. Yeah, it was a dumb movie, but you're right. He was funny in it. Listen, he's a good good comic. Also, I really liked him in the movie Dog, which he wrote, directed, produced, and starred in. And it's very good and very entertaining and very un-PC. 
But I think I may have mentioned this on your show before when I talked about Doug. He, not only is he very woke, but he told People Magazine that he'd be very happy if his daughter came out as trans or non-binary. It's a total lie. No parent really thinks that. Nobody says, oh, yeah, I want my kid to come out as non-binary or trans. He's just full of crap saying that. All right, last movie, Infinite Storm. All right, so this is one of those adventure movies of man versus nature. Somebody goes to the top of a mountain alone on a snowy cold day and doesn't tell anyone what could go wrong. Um, at first, you think that that person is actually Naomi Watts' character, who's a real life, based on a real life rescue lady. You find out through all the publicity and the promos and the, the trailer. So I'm not giving it away that she's a rescue person. She goes when she sees like in a park or near a mountain that um, there's a car just sitting there and there's supposed to be a storm. She goes to the mountain to look for the person whose car it is to try and save them. And and she finds this guy and tries to save him. Save him. This movie stressed me out a lot. I love these man versus snow kind of movies or man versus winter kind of movies. I love them. But I this one kind of stressed me out. I, I wasn't that entertained. And the reason why is it's very brutal. It's not like the other ones. It was so brutal and stressful and you feel like you're right there. Like I let out a lot of gasps and, and stuff. I usually don't. You really feel like you're in it, and it's really stressful. But it is entertaining. I could have done without some of the melodramatic angles of it towards the end. Um, but, it, you know, it was okay. Wow. So that's that's not really negative. I thought you were going to go negative on it. Yeah, I mean, I just thought it was a little stressful. It should have been entertaining more than stressful. You shouldn't – people go to the movies to escape and have a good time, I think, in general – or if they're watching a documentary, maybe to learn something, to be entertained. They want to get away from the stress of normal life. They don't want to watch a movie and feel like even more stressed out. And that's how I felt watching uh, this movie. Okay, so how would this compare to that, uh, what was a DiCaprio movie? Was that Revenant? Where it... I love the Revenant. Okay, that but movie I love. I thought that was brutal and, and just yes. hard and, and abrasive and freezing cold. And I thought it, it I, was. I was exhausted watching it. So how is this different? It, you know, it's not like something I can put into words, but it was different. That one was entertaining and in more of a, you know, I didn't feel like I was experiencing all these things like, Personally, in this movie, the things that happen are so brutal, and you feel like you're in distress the whole time. So more brutal I, I than just, Revenant, huh? More brutal, in my opinion, and it's like one thing after another after another. It never ends. It does not let up once it starts. Hey, so the top, the top movie on Netflix uh, for last week was The Adam Project. What was that again? That was uh, Ryan oh, Reynolds? I liked that one. Yeah, that one was not bad. I mean, it was not a great movie, but it was not a terrible movie. I, I thought it was fine families to watch it together. It's about this uh, this person that comes back as himself 40 years like ahead of time, comes back to 40 years before, and he meets his younger self. And together, they have to go back in time and then go forward in time and save the world um, from their father, their late father's evil partner. Who's going to destroy the earth? I, I thought it was it was entertaining. It was not bad at all. Um, I could do without Jennifer Garner playing the too saccharine sweet mom. Like I just can't stand her already. It's so over the top. Her over the top sweetness. It's just it's not real. It's so fake. Yeah, like the so what's synthetic. in your wallet commercials. Yeah, I mean yeah. she's like nutra sweet. All right, Ugh, I don't like it. All right, and uh, but I'll tell you, did you see the vegan, the bad vegan? You had texted me that, and I saw it in the, yes. the Netflix menu. But I've I've been busy this week and haven't watched anything. All right, well, it's in the top ten, and last week for part some days it was the top. Cool. So if you liked Tinder Swindler, Tinder Swindler, this is not as good, but, or as entertaining, but it's close. This woman, oh my god, I I, can't, I don't even want to give it away. Cause it's so ridiculous. The things she believed and was told, but Oh my gosh, you have to watch this, this, uh, bad vegan. Um, and you know, there's one comment in the movie by this journalist that wrote articles about this woman. It's a real life woman that owned vegan restaurant, two vegan restaurants. And he said, you know, people who are vegan 
are more into like believing these crazy things and mystical stuff that yep. really has no basis. Like crystals and, right. and herbs and yeah, stuff. Yeah, he mentioned crystals. Heck yes. yeah. Dude, I dated a girl like that. It was amazing. Uh, so when, when, when you <laughs> go, it was. yeah, it was. When you go through the top 10 on Netflix, the, the number one show is The Last Kingdom Season 5, Uhtred, Son of Uhtred. Number two is Pieces of Her. I, I haven't seen that. Have you seen Pieces of oh, Her? Oh, it's, it's such a wild goose chase. I felt so stupid we having sat through the whole thing. Okay. I, I, it's a thumbs down for me. Number three is the limited series called Inventing Anna, which we saw that, and it's adorable. You look so Paul. That Did you see that one? Which one? Uh, inventing Anna. It's the girl from no, Ozark. No, you and I talked about yeah. it, but I haven't seen it. It's Ruth from Ozark. And look, set the bar low, and when you go in and watch it, it'll be fun. Just know you're you're getting some little piece of candy. Uh, number five, mm -hmm. though, is Bad Vegan that you had recommended. It's the number five show on Netflix last week. And then I haven't seen Taboo or Top Boy. Uh, Vikings Valhalla season one, I have seen most of that, seen about half of that. In fact, I did get to watch two episodes of that this week. And then Live After Death with Tyler Henry. No idea what that is. Do you know what that is? Yes, that's some psychic baloney. Oh, psychic. I, it, it's a waste of time, yeah, where he's talking to the pretends he's talking to the dead. Miss Parker, you did know. you nod your head on that one? She, 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 she's seen it. She knows what it is. And then uh, number 10 for Netflix TV series is Good Girls Season 4, which I'm surprised I like that because it, I think it's a NBC show. And they, yeah, it was. Yeah. Now I think Netflix took it over. But you know what? Um, these are all the TV shows. There's also the top ten in movies. But um, well, wasn't that was that the full top ten? Because movies. Because isn't the the one is a movie that um the Adam no the Project. movies are the Adam Project, Rescue by Ruby, Gemini Man, The Ice Road, The Weekend Away, A Walk Among Tombstones, Windfall, Shrek, Shrek Two. And number 10 is a Medea Homecoming. So what was the, the movie that you were just griping about that Jesse Plemons is in? So there was this movie that was like number one this past weekend, last weekend. Um, and it stars um, Jason Siegel, I think his name is, and Phil Collins' daughter, Lily Collins. People don't know. She's Phil Collins from Genesis' daughter. And Jesse Plemons. And it's about Jesse Plemons is this billionaire and his new wife is Lily Collins. And this guy has broken into their home, trying to into their vacation home, thinking they weren't going to be there because he has some grievance against the billionaire and he wants to steal money from him. But then they come for the weekend there and he takes them hostage. And so that's what the movie's about. And it was OK. It wasn't a great movie. It was a little slow and boring, but it wasn't bad. The ending was. Uh, but anyhow, um, Jesse Plemons, I just don't understand how he's in everything now, like He's the Hollywood it girl. Okay, and so let's, I just let's, don't find him. Let's They're great. Let's explain who he is. So he was Landry in Friday Night Lights. Um, he was one the 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 Aryan kid that Jesse Pinkman called Opie in Breaking Bad, the one that shot the little boy on the motorcycle in the episode where they robbed the train. Uh, he was in Varsity Blues. Are you are you recognizing this guy's face? Because once you see his facial, you'll, you'll definitely be like, oh yeah, that guy. Uh, and so what was this movie you were talking about he's just recently in that was in the top 10? Windfall. And he's also in Windfall. The Power of the Dog, which is up for an Academy Award this weekend and probably will win because it's a, a gay movie. Like it's, you know, one of these Sub Rosa gay propaganda movies. And it's probably going to win. Um, and he's in that too, and that's also on Netflix. He's in everything now. Yeah, okay, so check it's crazy. Check out more of what he's done here. Uh, he was also not just in Breaking Bad and Friday Night Lights, two of my favorite shows of all time. Uh, he was also in the sequel to Breaking Bad, El Camino, the the Breaking Bad movie. He was? Yeah. Oh, well, he was the same guy, but yeah, he was definitely in that. He was in an episode of Black Mirror. He was in The Master, The Homesman, uh, Black Mass, Bridge of Spies, Game Night, Vice. The Irishman, Judas and the Black Messiah. Never heard of that one. Jungle Cruise, Power of the Dog. Yeah. Wow. Judas and the Black Messiah is a really horribly boring 60s movie um, about how the Black Panthers weren't terrorists. They were just misunderstood people who were who gave welfare to black people and were nice and made lunches. That's what that movie is yeah, about. Yeah, but part, part of me is sympath um, sympathetic to him because they had some sweet guns. Fantastic <laughs> arms, yeah. Uh, but but uh, another thing I like about this guy, Jesse Plemons, is he was born in Dallas and raised in a little town called Mart, which is in the Waco area. 
So he's kind of like my neighbor. He's not he's not far from where I'm at. And a lot of people who are listening right now are kind of in that area too. So Jesse Plemons, the Texas boy, done good. He's a creepy looking dude, though. Uh, I noticed that he's, yeah, he's gone from playing hyper innocent looking guys, like sort of Opie kind of guys, to playing the most evil dude in the room now. Yeah, I mean, he just looks kind of like ground meat to me. That's about to be made into a burger patty. Just saying. Yeah. So that. that I mean, listen, I'm not. It's not like it's. I know he was born that way, and he can't help it, and all that. I just don't understand the Hollywood love affair with this guy i, I don't know he's in everything now. i know but that's why this is ruthless movie reviews there's there's no ruth allowed so you're that's right your your opinion is is correct because you're allowed to have your opinion all right and wasn't that when there's someone else something else from the um top 10 over here that you liked was it a walk among the tombstones or the weekend away which one was it so there were 30 seconds um, by the way the weekend away was okay it was like a lifetime movie of the week I want to warn people off of HBO Max, The Tourist, and Netflix pieces of her. They're long, wild goose cases. The payoff isn't that great. Don't, you know, I kind of like doing that. that. We should we should focus just as much on what you shouldn't watch as what you recommend. That's that's right. just as useful. 